Now then, how are you doing? I hope you're well. I recently visited Fountains Abbey, a magnificent abbey near Ripon in North Yorkshire and a veritable jewel in the National Trust's crown. Well, it being late October, I was there in search of autumn colours and I'm pleased to say that I found them. Well, we were also fortunate to be visiting on one of the rare special occasions when the Abbey is floodlit at dusk and visitors are allowed to wander around the site accompanied by the sounds of Gregorian chants. Well there's a lot that could be said about the place but I'm just going to let the images tell their own story. I love Fountains Abbey and here's why. This, for me, is the definitive view of Fountains Abbey. 
The trees in the background tell us all we need to know about the physicality of the location and the warm late sunlight on the walls of the abbey with a splendid array of good strong shadows all help to visually explain its three-dimensional properties. In watercolour, lighting is everything. A well-lit subject is easier to understand because the contrasts enable us to differentiate more clearly between the elements that make up its construction. Because shadows follow the contours of the surface as they fall upon, that also means that they help to visually explain those contours. A late afternoon sun also means longer shadows and richer colours. Definitely one of the best times of the day. There are many different ways to paint an autumn scene. One of the biggest challenges with painting autumnal foliage is that of keeping it looking fresh and bright. The possibility of overworking it is always a potential problem. With a scene like this, I always like to start out by establishing a wet in wet wash and then build upwards from that. On this occasion, I've chosen to take the bull by the horns and create the shapes of the lighter trees by negatively painting around them. Only when that's done do I start to apply those rich autumn colours. Late October means deer rutting season. It's a time of the year when stags compete for females by fighting with each other. As you can see, there was a great deal of roaring and macho posturing going on in the Studley Royal Deer Park, adjacent to the Fountains Abbey Water Gardens. Thank you. 
Having explored the extensive water gardens, it was time to start heading back towards the abbey. And with the sun starting to set, so the floodlights came on. The transformation was as dramatic and exciting as we'd hoped for. As it got darker, so the lighting became more prominent. Walking through the abbey with walls and random corners illuminated by the floodlights was indeed a magical experience. Well, I hope you enjoyed that short trip around Fountains Abbey and the extracts of the two paintings that came out of my visit. Well, if you're interested in the longer version of this video, which also features the two demonstrations in full and complete with my commentary, then I'm pleased to say that it is available along with a step-by-step -step guide to painting them yourself and hundreds of other similar projects to all subscribers of my online tuition service, which starts at a mere nine pounds per month. Full details of how to subscribe to that can be found in the description below. Well, before I go, however, I have just one final thought, and it's to do with the challenge of painting autumnal colours. Stick around for another short extract then, where I give a couple of quick recommendations on colour and technique. 
Let's start with some typical autumn colour, which I've mixed from cadmium yellow and cadmium red. One quick way to create a tree shape is by painting around it and producing it negatively. But why do it that way? Well, quite simply because it gives me the lightest, brightest possible surface upon which to add light, vibrant colours. In watercolour, you have to be very careful how you mix and match your colours. Working with these primaries is fine until they start to cross-contaminate each other, and then you'll probably end up with mud. I could mask the tree out beforehand, of course, but that takes some of the spontaneity away from the process. Well, here's another tip. I recommend using lemon yellow for that light tree instead of reusing the cadmium yellow. Its acidic, slightly cool qualities make it the perfect contrast against the warmer tones of the background. And to keep the autumn theme going, all I need to do is drop in some cadmium red to finish. Well, it's an oversimplified example but I hope it's enough to convey the crucial message. I guarantee the negative approach will give you a lighter, brighter finish. And then you can say goodbye to the mud.